Hi everyone. Um, the presentation was initially intended for two speakers, but uh, Eric Fiol uh, could not come here today, so my apologies for this. I'm Paul Irola, and uh, uh, we are working with Eric on uh, mobile uh, banking security, and I'm going to give you a few results about uh, what we found. Here is the agenda of the presentation. I will first introduce uh, the background. In fact, all our work has been done under the Open DAFI project, and I will present it. Then uh, I will uh, explain, uh, detail our tool that we use to analyze application. Uh, and uh, as an appetizer, we will see the Facebook application in details and what uh, it, do, it do on the phone when you install it and use it. Then, uh, at last, we will present the global result about uh, all uh, banking, mobile banking applications, and uh, especially the differences between ASEAN and Western mobile banking. After this global perspective, we will see uh, the detailed analy analysis of five applications, and uh, what we have discovered. So, the Open DAFI project is a fork of uh, the DAFI project, which is uh, le, the development of a sovereign antiviral system for Android, Linux, and Windows. It is done by the ESUR uh, Cryptology and Virology Laboratory. It is uh, partially funded. Uh, by the French government, and I will only speak about the Android park, uh, part of the project. So, one of the key features of the Open uh, DAFI project for Android, uh, it's uh, the, the only application you can install on the phone come from a secure market. So. Uh, the applications from this market are, fu are fully analyzed. They are cer certified to be uh, compliant with our trust policy, and they are signed uh, with our private key. So uh, you cannot install an application that is not signed with our private key. We, we rapidly came to the conclusion that an application not being a malware is not a sufficient information to be um, considered a trustworthy application. Because uh, data leakage, the user tracking uh, capabilities, and the vulnerabilities are a real motive wh why you don't want to install even a genuine application on your phone. So the, so the problem evolved from not being a malware to be trustworthy. And we came along for a rule that an application must follow to be considered trustworthy. The first one is it does not contain hidden functionality, so it includes malware and uh, backdoors. Uh, user information connection must be motivated by explicit functionality, so it limits uh, the user tracking capabilities. Uh, web communication uh, involving personal data must be encrypted, and the app does not contain known vulnerability. So the policy covers all the major problems we can find on an application. So why, banking app, why mobile banking? The fact that uh, uh, most of the banks have now mobile banking application, so they are forcing their users to move toward mobile banking. And um, because uh, mobile, banking, uh, um, mobile applications are not a very mature technology, uh, there is always a risk that uh, these applications become the weakest link to attack uh, the user or the bank. Moreover, our money is obviously a serious business, as well as our pr privacy and confidentiality. So we expect mobile uh, applications to be at the top of security and confidentiality. Most of the banks have been contacted um, 
to provide all the technical details about what we found, but uh, just a few have answered. So now we wait for the bank to contact us after the meeting. So we have designed three tools to achieve our goals. The first one is um, an Android malware detector and uh, um, based on data mining and machine learning. It also performs uh, static analysis of the application and produces a report that uh, supports the uh, manual analysis. The second one is Panoptes. It's a dynamic analysis tool. It intercepts uh, HTTP and HTTPS uh, communication and uh, build a report that uh, also help the manual analysis. The, the third one is an Android application web crawler to collect uh, new uh, malware on the wild. These tools are non-public uh, at the present time, but uh, we are working to, to release it on the incoming years. So, Agile uh, reverse the application extract a lot of characteristics uh, that we use for machine learning and uh, that are also useful from a static analysis point of view. It generates a static analysis report from these characteristics. I will show you the Facebook uh, static analysis report. So, can you see? Yeah. So, uh, we see all the permissions that uh, uh, the, appli the application requests. So, Facebook uses uh, lots of permissions. And uh, we detect also um, non risky behavior and uh, uh, risky um, method calls. So sorry, uh, the, all the titles are in French because this report is not intended to, to be uh, uh, public. So uh, the, this table is uh, uh, lists all uh, risky behaviors and this table lists all risky uh, API calls. So, uh, this code uh, happened two more times in malware than in a regular application, and it's why uh, it is uh, interesting to uh, list it. So when uh, uh, we want to, to see where a feature is uh, used, uh, we just click on this feature, so the dynamic code loading from a DEX file, and it lists all the classes uh, that use this, fe the, this feature. And uh, we can click on it, and it opens the reversed code of the application uh, where these features is used. So sometimes the uh, Java uh, decompilation do, uh, doesn't work because it's not 100% uh, uh, guaranteed. So it uh, prints the smiley uh, code, which is a uh, human readable, human readable um, uh, um, uh, language for uh, Java Byte um, machine code. So. so the next tool is Panoptes. <coughs> uh, we see that static analysis is not uh, sufficient. We need dynamic analysis to see what is really executed because there are dead code and untriggerable, untriggerable uh, conditions. So uh, all the code is not always executed. The idea uh, is that network communication is the bottleneck of uh, all major uh, behaviors. So um, it, uh, we design a man in the middle tool that capture uh, all uh, communication between an app and the web. Uh, the tool opens uh, an access point that uh, the phone connects to it, and it's how we, we do the, um, the man in the middle. I told you that it can get uh, uh, encrypted communication. So, uh, it, uh, in fact, uh, as we control the phone, 
we put a fake certification authority in the phone. So uh, the, the tool um, certify on, on the fly the, uh, the request with our custom certification authority. So the phone actually believe it is a legit communication. It's a simple, uh, when it's just simple material, your regular computer will do it. The next tool uh, we are presenting you is Tarantula. So, when, when we, uh, uh, on the, the malware detection problem, uh, we started with a little database of classified application, but uh, this uh, database uh, revealed itself to be uh, too small. In fact, we are rap rapidly came to the conclusion that uh, a large database of classified application is the heart of the antiviral game. So it's a subject rarely, rarely explained or detailed in security paper, but it's what uh, uh, gets you um, from uh, a new universary uh, perspective to a business perspective. You cannot have a really viable and operational antivirus if you have not built a large database of uh, malware. So the question is how to uh, populate uh, such a database and how do the others make it? Several uh, universities share their uh, malware. Uh, I gave you some links and some web websites also. But it is not sufficient. And in fact, uh, our guess is that uh, antiviral companies get them, uh, mainly get their samples from uh, clients and inter-company uh, inter exchange. And it, it is a way we can't mimic because it means uh, you have to be in the business to be in the business. So we, start, we search for a freely, yeah, it's not very, you, you can, uh, I'm sorry, you can uh, really see uh, this slide, but uh, uh, the slides are uh, available so you can check it later. So this is the tr structure of uh, Tarantula. Uh, we designed, a, uh, an application web crawler to a massively download application. Uh, we, we, take it, we take them from different sources like uh, Torrent, Wild FTP, uh, alternative Android market from different countries, China, uh, USA, Europe, and uh, also the Google Play Store. Let's start uh, the detailed analysis with Facebook as an appetizer. So we already know that yeah, uh, Facebook collects uh, information submitted by a client, by users, excuse me. Uh, but uh, what about uh, uh, users' uh, information collection that uh, without the user knowledge? And what about information uh, that are stored in uh, your phone in plain text? because uh, we have uh, a project in our lab that shows that any clear uh, plain text data stored in the phone can be stolen in less than one minute. It's a project uh, done by Eric Fiol and one, in, and one of uh, his students. Uh, I'm going to show you a video of this. We have a little uh, device, a dongle, that can interact with uh, an Android phone. So the scenario is the, the victim is at a cafe and uh, the attacker is, is uh, just behind it. He stole uh, the, the phone in, in his uh, uh, pocket as, and connected to his uh, dongle. Uh, the dongle uh, interacts with the recovery partition of the phone, so it affects, uh, um, it can affect uh, lots of uh, Android phones. And uh, in less than 
a minute, it uh, steals the uh, plain text uh, data stored in the phone and uh, reboots the, the phone. So, so if Facebook uh, let uh, lots of information on the phone, uh, it can be easy to, to get them. So, uh, so we have installed uh, the Facebook application and connected to my personal account. Uh, after some basic navigation, we, we get all the data cr uh, created locally with the following command. You can do it at home with your own uh, phone if, we, if it is uh, routed. So uh, we get all uh, data and uh, after, oh sorry, after re uh, reading it uh, in binary mode, you will rapidly get uh, some pattern of interesting data. And uh, so the next thing to do is to, uh, to design some uh, regex to, to list all of this data. data. So here is the regex to, uh, to get the, uh, the contact list and all of his uh, informations. So here I, it's all my friends. Uh, you can uh, see it's, uh, uh, their friendship status, uh, the city where they live, uh, or at least the last city they provide, but it is not over. You can have also all private uh, messages uh, that you have with your contacts since the creation of the account, of the Facebook account. You can get all the photos, so the, the photos that uh, your uh, friends share with you, and uh, obviously uh, all your private wall content, and many other private and non-private data. So, in fact, you have almost all information that when you connect uh, with your account. So, if an attacker wants to uh, stole your data or know something about you, um, and these things are in your, your uh, private Facebook account, like uh, the messages with, with your friends. It does not necessarily to, uh, need to know your credential, but have an ac physical access to your phone. Uh, we, we looked also for uh, the request that uh, Facebook sent to their server and other servers uh, to see uh, if uh, Facebook uh, uh, was leaking some data. So I will show you the panoptest graph of uh, Facebook application. So it's uh, the graph. You can uh, see all servers that are contacted uh, when you connect to your account, so it's uh, lots of servers. Uh, and this is a typical request that Facebook send uh, to their server when uh, you connect it. So you log in, and it sends a very, very, very long string in a post request. You see all the metadata and uh, the content. So it's a very, very long request, and it is not the only one. And here I can see all the, the strings that are sent to the Facebook servers. So if I list all this, this string, it became very, very creepy, as you see it. So it's a one kilometer request. <laughs> OK. so. It's not very human readable, so you, you need to, uh, another reverse procedure to uh, know what is really sent. So I will show you the procedure to uh, reverse the, the ultra complicated post request. So you in escape your URL code recursively. After you've done this, you pass the output as a JSON object. But uh, in the JSON object, all variable can be a, a string representing another via a JSON object. So uh, until uh, all it is reversed, you try to 
uh, parse each string as a JSON object, and within, within this JSON object, uh, you can have a very long base 64 uh, strings. So when you try to decode them, uh, uh, them, you can have another file. This file can be a zipped file. And when you uh, uncompress it, uh, you will see a Windows Media Dump file. So it is a, a, a crash uh, format for Windows in Android, which is uh, Linux. So it's kind of weird. You can uh, open it with uh, WinDBG. And after all, all these uh, requests are reversed, uh, you, you, you list all the variables and their content. And you can have a big picture of what it is sent. So, in fact, all, uh, almost all configuration of your, uh, of your phone have, uh, is sent. Uh, especially the lock pattern on your phone. So if you have a lock pattern and the size of the lock pattern. Uh, all the security settings, and even uh, uh, weird things like the soon you use for uh, to wake up, the soon you use for notification and uh, call, and uh, yeah, uh, the usual tracking user info. So each time you you click somewhere, you it sends a timestamp for for this action. Let's continue with uh, the banking application. So we have analyzed all these applications. And the red one are uh, the one we, are, we will present you. Here is a comparative uh, statistics uh, about uh, uh, American and European application uh, uh, and ASEAN application. So just uh, to be quick, because uh, I lack uh, time. Uh, uh, banking applications uh, use lots of permissions. So if uh, the application is vulnerable, uh, the attacker does not even uh, need to uh, run a root exploit, because the application has already a large permission on the phone. And uh, between uh, European and, uh, and American and ASEAN uh, mobile banking application. The difference is, is uh, the, the, mobile, uh, the application from ASEA uh, uh, use a little uh, more permissions. From uh, the when we uh, do statistics on uh, behavior, this is a, a narrowed list of uh, the behavior we detect. Uh, just what uh, we can say is uh, all, almost all applications lo load their content from the web. So when I say load their content from the web, I mean they load their interfaces uh, within a web view uh, class. So uh, within a WebView class, you can call JavaScript. And if the, the URL used uh, to load the content is uh, an encrypted URL, you can change JavaScript to trigger some vulnerability. So, Especially with the add JavaScript interface, which is an interface for controlling uh, Java function from JavaScript, and uh, lots of uh, Android phones are vulnerable to a particular vulnerability that uh, an attacker can uh, call any uh, function from the JavaScript. So, uh, like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, as uh, the, the mobile banking application use uh, all the, the behavior that uh, are susceptible to trigger uh, vulnerability. Uh, 
we had to, to carefully uh, read the code of uh, each one. So. As an application uh, seems to be more aware of security problems than uh, European and American uh, application. In fact, uh, we've seen uh, more use of uh, custom obfuscation, for example, uh, uh, um, encrypted code decrypted on and executed on the fly, and uh, custom uh, list of uh, SSL uh, certification authority. So it, uh, it was much harder to analyze this application uh, because uh, with the custom list of, uh, of uh, certification authority, it uh, block our dynamic analysis tool. So I will show you some uh, uh, what we found in all uh, ASEAN uh, mobile banking applications we have analyzed for this talk. Uh, you, you see 50% of the application use uh, fake uh, certification authority countermeasure. So our tool was unable to uh, get the content of HTTPS, uh, HTTPS uh, request. So in fact, in 50% of the case, we have had not uh, dynamic analysis data. Uh, we are thinking to improve our tool to, to bypass uh, this countermeasure. We, we have found two vulnerabilities in the Bank of China and in the State Bank of uh, Mongolia, and we are presenting you the Bank of China vulnerability. Okay. The first case is the uh, application from uh, JP Morgan. What is interesting here? Uh, we receive uh, a string in a JSON object here. And the variable name is signature. So at first, uh, uh, it seems uh, really weird to have a uh, so, so long uh, uh, si signature. So maybe uh, it is encrypted data. Uh, the next thing we've done, we use a tool called API Monitor that uh, instruments the application. So it uh, reverses the application, add monitor function uh, around uh, targeted function we targeted uh, all um, uh, deciphering function. Then it uh, compiled it uh, into a new application. So when you execute this application, it dump on, on the log cat the argument of the targeted uh, function. It's what we done. And this is what we get. So the first, uh, the first one is uh, the signature string which is uh, received from the web. And uh, just after this, uh, receiving this string, uh, deciphering method is called. Uh, we are able to, to get with API monitor the, uh, all the parameters and the return value. So uh, we, it is a list of, uh, excuse me, a list of uh, by, uh, ASCII character uh, value in decimal. So uh, we just a little uh, scripting. Here we can reconstruct the string, and this is what uh, this is the string after uh, deciphering. So, it, in fact, it is a string. Uh, th there are uh, several strings in this string. Uh, we have a recurring pattern uh, to uh, pass the string. The, the two first one seems to be signature, and, but the third one uh, not seems to be signature. It, it is in fact a list of uh, applications that uh, 
uh, use uh, root uh, write. So our guess is that uh, the GP Morgan uh, search for application that use uh, root write. So when it detects it, it means the phone is uh, rooted. But uh, the, the string is uh, cut because there are limitations in the log cut. You cannot print uh, as character as you want. But it is not a problem because we have the recurring pattern. And with this recurring pattern, we can search in the code source, in the reverse code source, where it is uh, used. So it's what we've done. And uh, this is a subset of the, the code that parse the, the string. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, a part of the string is sent directly into a shell command. And this is a, a, a part of the, of the um, verification procedure from uh, GP Morgan. They uh, execute some uh, shell commands on your phone uh, dynamically to see if you have been infected by a malware. But the problem is this is a remote shell because uh, these shell commands are executed on the fly. So uh, a remote shell in an uh, application is, must be considered as a backdoor because if uh, GP Morgan wants, it can, it can send arbitrary uh, shell commands. So it can control your phone through the application if they want. They, they could have done it uh, differently. For example, loading uh, this command from an encrypted asset, but uh, this is not the way they, di they did it. The vulnerability is, is still there. It's not a vulnerability, it's a backdoor. But it's still there. Uh, since uh, we have presented it in last December in the CCC, The next case is uh, the BNP application. So BNP is a bank from France. It's a major bank. Here is the panoptic graph of the, the application. We are uh, unable to, to get uh, the, um, the HTTPS content from the application to the BNP server because uh, uh, BNP uh, was uh, embed their uh, custom list of certification authority uh, just for the connection with their server. So I can get the content, but this is not a problem because the vulnerability we found uh, is in an unencrypted uh, communication. So this is a, a server address from uh, um, uh, companies that uh, um, deliver uh, adware. Uh, BNP use it for, for its own advertising within the application. So additional service, uh, sort of uh, thing like that. And no, it's not this one. Not this one, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, there are problem. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, there are problem on this, uh, on this one. In fact, I think I switched the name. It is another uh, a bank. So uh, I don't know what I know, maybe. Sorry for this. No, it's there. OK. OK. So we receive an, H, uh, an HTML document that is uh, executed within uh, a web view. So this is a JavaScript. Uh, this is a JavaScript. And this uh, function does not seem to be in a regular uh, library, JavaScript library. So we, we thought it may, maybe was 
um, uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript interface. And so we search for this screen in the reverse code source, and we uh, get uh, a re uh, JavaScript interface. So as, uh, as it is used in uh, plain text communication, uh, an attacker can modify it to, to execute custom JavaScript on the phone, and uh, a large portion of the Android market is affected by uh, a vulnerability, um, and this vulnerability uh, give um, the, the attacker can uh, call arbitrary uh, function uh, on the phone. So it can uh, own the, the your phone. So uh, with this vulnerability, uh, anyone doing man in the middle can uh, own your phone. Uh, the, I, uh, I looked for uh, this application just before the talk, and the, the vulnerability was still exploitable, and, but uh, it is very easy to correct it. You just have to change uh, HTTP to an HTTPS, so. In the next case, uh, I am going to uh, talk about a problem that affects a lot of um, the, the, the mobile world through the Sparebank uh, application. So Sparebank is a Russian bank. Um, And this, uh, this application sends interesting strings to their server, to uh, uh, Yandex Maps uh, server. So it's, this is the MAC address of my custom uh, access point that I use to uh, do uh, SS, uh, SSL mode in the middle. And th uh, this is the list of all surrounding uh, MAC address uh, and their um, uh, strength force, uh, signal strength. So the, the application send uh, continuously or uh, dump all the Wi-Fi um, uh, that are uh, around the phone. So uh, it may be uh, weird, but in fact, uh, Google Maps do it too. So when you, uh, you examine the request where it is used, so this is one of these requests. So it sends all uh, Wi-Fi networks. And when uh, we get the answer, is phone by Wi-Fi. And it sends coordinates of, of uh, something. So. It is, in fact, a uh, um, geolocation. And uh, when you are indoor, your GPS signal uh, is not uh, good. So the application send all the surrounding Wi-Fi networks. And uh, uh, the, the server can uh, uh, send you your coordinate. It means that uh, this server, Yandex Maps, have the uh, no your Wi-Fi uh, location. But as uh, it is in France, in my laboratory, I don't think that uh, any uh, Yandex, uh, so someone from Yandex, came uh, here to, uh, to locate all my Wi-Fi networks. So uh, how the application, how the, uh, they get uh, this location? And it, it means that Yandex, as well as uh, Google, Google, uh, Google, have an extended database of uh, worldwide uh, Wi-Fi uh, networks with their location, so personal and uh, companies' uh, Wi-Fi networks as well. And in fact, your uh, your phone is doing. Uh, while driving. 
So if you are not familiar with while driving, uh, it's a concept where you are in your car and with your uh, uh, laptop and you go to your turn and uh, you, uh, you, you get the location of all uh, Wi-Fi that are surrounding. But, uh, but it, in this case, is your phone that, that is doing this process. So every time you, you walk with your phone, the application is constantly sending uh, the surrounding Wi-Fi uh, networks. It's, uh, and uh, when the, the server has uh, three uh, position, uh, w uh, f for uh, one uh, Wi-Fi networks, it can triangulate it, so it can get its location. And so every time you have an Andro uh, Android or uh, as well as an iPhone or, and you use Google Maps that is uh, installed uh, uh, when you buy it, or if you use your next map, it do it uh, all the time uh, when you use your, your phone. In fact, you have an option to check, to uncheck, that is enabled by default. Uh, so you need to uncheck this option in, in a location uh, that send all uh, surrounding Wi-Fi networks. If you don't want that your Wi-Fi uh, um, will be on the Google or another company server. So if you lose your, your Wi-Fi, just call Google. The next case is a bank from Bra Brazil. It's a Bradesco. So what is it interesting here? Is a communication uh, with uh, a server in uh, uh, plain text. And uh, it's, uh, the application asks uh, a key to the server. And uh, the answer uh, is obviously OK. No, it's not this communication, sorry. It's, uh, yeah. So the server uh, answer a key, but it is a private key. So this key is used for additional service, but it's, it also used uh, in um, uh, in um, ciphering procedure to add a layer of protection on uh, your credential when when you connect. So in fact, there are no an, uh, additional layer of protection because this key is received in, clear, in uh, plain text. So this uh, vulnerability does not uh, give the the, uh, an opportunity to an attacker to exploit the phone, but in fact, uh, it uh, could be used to, uh, to do so social engineering uh, because uh, ac uh, additional services of the bank use it. And uh, also, the, the, the application embeds the jQuery JavaScript, which is used uh, in the web view. So to, to not load this, uh, this uh, library from the web, it embeds it. But the problem is that uh, this, uh, the version embedded is uh, very, very uh, obsolete. So it contains uh, vulnerabilities that are uh, list listed uh, in the um, in the C, um, in the uh, in the vulnerability database, uh, I don't remember the, the name. Excuse me. C CVE. So the, uh, the last application is the Bank of China. The application, uh, the problem here 
the application uh, ch uh, check for updates. So, the application uh, check for updates and it sends a command to, uh, to the bank server. Uh, and, okay, this one. So, the server, so okay, it, it uh, sends a, a request on the server uh, that check the, the version uh, update. So, it uh, send is uh, application version here and the server uh, answer a JSON file. And if we look at this JSON file, the server send um, a link to the Google Play to download the, the new application. So this download link is in HTTPS, but in fact, the verification procedure is done in plain text. So if an attacker, an attacker can change this JSON file and change, uh, change the URL and especially the package name uh, to, mm, to fool the user to download another application that could uh, seems to be uh, uh, the application from this bank, but which is not. So in fact, it could uh, fool a user to install uh, a malware because this is done in uh, plain text. So uh, lots of problems are, are triggered by, uh, by communication do, uh, doing uh, plain text requests. So a, a, rule, uh, a rule to apply when you, when you develop is always uh, always uh, use SSL because you don't know uh, all the problems you can have when you use an encrypted text, an encrypted communication. So an attacker uh, can uh, fool the user to install arbitrary application, but uh, also uh, the application asks the server uh, for links to uh, display information in the application, and these links are in uh, uh, this uh, procedure is done in HTTP, so an attacker can also change these links to uh, display another thing, so it can uh, exploit the confidence the user are, have in the bank to, uh, to uh, do uh, whatever could. Uh, could be uh, moneyable. So. so here is uh, the type of answer we get from the banks when we have an answer. So we, uh, we send them uh, a report that explains what we have found and uh, what could be the, the thing uh, it can do to, 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 to correct the problems. Here, uh, uh, the, the, this bank, uh, the application from the bank was not uh, vulnerable to anything, but we gave them the report, and the answer is a link to their uh, web page, uh, which talk about security uh, in the uh, mobile banking application. So uh, it is. Uh, <laughs> so uh, the bank does not uh, uh, always uh, are, are not always very um, uh, very happy to talk with us. Uh, and when we have an answer, so now we wait the bank to contact us, and if uh, they want the detail of what we found. On, you, on their application, we send them. And, uh, but uh, we expect to them to change uh, the problem, to correct the problem. So, we intend to analyze lots of applications, not uh, just uh, 
mobile banking application. Uh, moreover, we are thinking to publish all uh, our reports uh, that we've uh, done uh, when uh, the, uh, the application has been corrected. We, uh, I, I am starting actually a, a PhD to and one of its objectives is to finalize all the pr uh, prototypes uh, we've, we've designed and to add more um, mathematical algorithm to automatize, uh, automatize the analysis to have a fine-grained analysis because uh, malware detection is just a part of the problem and you can't, be, you can't limit yourself to malware detection. You have to check for vulnerabilities, for uh, data leakage, user tracking uh, over uh, user tracking. So, and the last thing is, uh, as an IT engineer and security researcher, we need to pressurize uh, uh, the developers to uh, on uh, the subject of user privacy, because uh, lots of time the, the developers uh, to get money, they, uh, they, uh, they dump lots of personal data uh, to, to monetize their application, to optimize the, the monetization. So, and um, it is massively uh, appearing and uh, we need to know about that, the first thing, but uh, we need to, uh, to pressure the developer to not uh, doing it by, by revealing what is really done as I have done with the Facebook application. So when I, when I say uh, to, do, to not uh, send uh, inform, personal user information, I do not mean se sending an anonymously information, anonymous information. Because uh, uh, <coughs> this is uh, also uh, information that are, uh, be, uh, are used to do massive social engineering, to uh, get more money from their user. So all the information that are not uh, related to the app application functionality uh, should not be sent. Oh, sorry. So when, uh, what alternative do we have? Uh, when it is possible, uh, use open source application because when there are a problem on this application, generally the problem is uh, rapidly corrected. And uh, when you, you install a bank application, try to, uh, to use a local bank instead of an international bank because uh, international bank tend to have more problem than it's not uh, uh, all, all the time the, the case, but uh, international banks tend to uh, do more user tracking than local bank also. Thank you for your attention, and now uh, you can ask me questions and I will answer you. Uh, when it is finalized, it will be a uh, 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 matter of discuss with uh, all the person uh, implied. Okay. Uh, how do you handle certificate, certificate in Can you repeat, please?
Uh, can you? Uh, uh, be like yeah. It's like, uh, it's cause I, maybe I, I know it, maybe, but in other world. Yeah, yeah, they are quantum measure, like, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, the next thing in, is uh, you have to uh, instrument uh, the application or uh, the system where this application is, uh, is, uh, is used. And, and uh, instrumentation, oh, so I know the, the, a little the matter, it's a, a little uh, less stable. So you will have lots of problem, but it will, it will always bypass all the security measure uh, um, because when you instrument the, the kernel or, or its own application, you can bypass all this uh, feature. I'm sorry because I uh, I have not designed this tool, so I, I could not uh, uh, detail you how it is uh, uh, make. But if you are, uh, uh, send this question to Eric Fiol, he could uh, answer you. But I cannot uh, answer you on this. I'm sorry. Thanks. Thank you. Another question. Thank you.